I stumbled down dark stairwells for what seemed like forever, until suddenly I found myself... Wow! In an abandoned London underground station. This place must have been closed down decades ago. The plot was much too thin for my fingers. There was nothing very useful in my bag, just a single hair clip. pushed the hair clip into the slot and whatever was stuck there disappeared into the machine. I pulled out an old English penny. An ancient bar of chocolate dropped into the tray at the bottom of the machine. And as a special bonus, the penny dropped through to the reject pocket. I took the ancient bar of chocolate. I pulled out an old English penny. The ghost obviously didn't want to talk. Perhaps it was shy. The date on the poster was before I was born. It looked just like the modern one. A latch lock stopped me getting into the cupboard. The blade of the dagger just fitted between the door and the soft wood frame. The door gave slightly and then held firm. My fingers were too big to reach into the tiny crack. The machine wasn't about to weigh me for nothing. I put the old penny into the slot, the needle twitched rustily, and the machine spat out a card. I remembered my student days when I regularly forgot my house keys. A wiggle with the thick card between the frame and the lock and the latch lifted. The train was my ride out of it. I could worry about not having a ticket when I got to the docks. The end of the reed was too narrow for the dart to fit into.
As soon as I stooped to investigate the hole, its inhabitant disappeared into the darkness. The end of the reed had been neatly bitten off. Now I knew what was living in there. A long-toothed, snarling, furry, wild thing. The dart fitted snugly into the reed. Great. I was tooled up and dangerous. just came away from the rock as I pulled it. It was a needle of rock in the middle of the clearing. It didn't look like a natural formation. I remembered Ketch's log. For is it not writ that tis easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle? Seemed pretty relevant now. The creeper didn't look like it would hold my weight. No good. I'd have to be bitten by a radioactive spider before I stood any chance of getting up there. The net attached easily enough to the creeper and seemed secure. Great. I'd created some sort of creeper marker fishing net assembly. Sometimes I terrify myself with my creative genius. I'd successfully got the marker into a position near the top of the needle simply by using the kind of lateral thinking that can get you institutionalized.
What the? Steady, guy. It's just a monkey. Three shallow holes had been made in the rock. Initials had been carved into the rock. Initials carved into the stone read F.K. Frederick Ketch had been here. The hill I was on had reminded me of a camel's hump as I'd climbed up it. Now I had to see what I could see. It was a good cave for hiding treasure in. Shame about the flooding problem. A needle rock. Eye of the Needle? Heck, Ketch could have hidden his treasure anywhere. This island's full of hiding places. It was the marker which I had raised up the Needle of Rock. I could see the marker I had fastened on the rock down in the forest, and right in line with it, that had to be where Ketch had hidden his treasure. The Xibalba princess lay at anchor just below Tower Bridge. I knew I'd found the right ship as soon as I saw Pablo at the rail. But the Kola woman was there. They'll know it was me. But you have the stone. The right stone. You're sure? Yes, of course. It's the Jaguar stone. No possible mistake. Here it is. Karzak, please. The police will be looking for me soon. You're going to get me out of the country, aren't you? Stop your whining, Uvier. 
You have any idea what this stone symbolizes? I thought you just wanted it to frighten the natives. Oh, I intend to cast this stone into the sea. But why? It's unique. Exactly. With it gone, the Mayan priests plan to destroy Tezcatlipoca cannot succeed. I can assure you that Tezcatlipoca is a mythical figure. Such a small mind you live in. Tezcatlipoca is real. I have seen him in my dreams. We have spoken of his plans for his world. We have spoken of your part in his plans. My part? He told me he would be useful. He told me how to crush your spirit by turning you to drugs. My wife died. You know that full well. She was my world, my everything. And now? You are no longer useful. She called out your name as she died, you know. What? What are you saying? And then they thought you'd done it. It all worked perfectly. You? It was you? You bastard! You monster! For the love of God, Kazakh! Which one? There were no signs of life, but I checked that Oubillé really was beyond help. We were going to need the stone to thwart Karzak. I knew Oubillé would have approved. It was the Jaguar stone, all right. <laughs> 